a stress relief recipe box shown here made out of bamboo cutting boards from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be making all these on the longer B1 laser now a little backstory when I first made this the first one I thought this just it was actually a Christmas gift for somebody and what I do is I put the little shooter bottles in there the little bottles of liquor you can get at the liquor store some people call them airplane liquor the little bottles so I made one, I showed it to somebody, and they thought, oh, that's cool, make, make me one, how much you want for it. And then it just kind of snowballed, the next thing you know, I was making a whole bunch of them. Then I was making them uh, for, to be gender specific, uh, with a little male or female signs on it, like you see here, in this whole set that I've put together for someone. Now, of course, I don't sell these with the liquor in them, because I don't have a liquor license. You've got to buy your own liquor. But... Uh, I'm going to show you how to make this and there will be a free file download with the complete pattern for it and what they're made of is these uh, cutting boards you get Dollar Tree. The, the smaller ones here are the most common. You can find those all over the place. Bucket a quarter piece. You'll need six of them to make one of these boxes. Uh, come wrapped in plastic like this. The, the pattern here is for material. You don't have to use bamboo but the material has to be 7.5 millimeters thick or that's 0.3 inches if you're in the decimal part of it there uh, if you try to use something thicker or thinner it's not going to work because tabs won't line up so you'll need to have stuff in that kind of category and these uh, bamboo boards they engrave beautifully they nice dark engrave on them they cut nice uh, it does make a lot of smoke so make sure you're well ventilated when you do it uh, they also have a larger board like this, these are five bucks. Uh, but you will need, if you're only gonna make one of these boxes, you'll need two of these. If you're gonna be making two of the boxes, you'll need three of these. And I'll show you on the computer here how to lay all this out. Okay, when you open the light burn file, you'll get this right here. And of course, we ha I have some notes over here on the side. There's also an art library in there you can load in and it has all the pieces and parts that's shown right over here. Uh, along with three different choices for the top and you can modify those if you need to to make it say whatever you want. You might want it to say grandma's secret cookie recipes and actually put recipes in it. But since I'm putting liquor in these and this has become a really big seller, this is what I'm putting out there. As I said, you can modify this as you wish. Again, this is for the uh, design for those little Dollar Tree bamboo cutting boards you can get. Or if you can get one of the big ones, if they happen to have them, you can get most of these. I think you can get all the parts out of one. I haven't tried it. But I think if you scooch these together a little bit over here, you could probably get it out of one of those boards. Uh, again, this is for a 40-watt laser. I'm using the longer B1. If you're going to use a 30-watt, 20-watt, or 10-watt, you're going to need to do some tests, cuts. Uh, I don't recommend trying to do this on less than a 10-watt laser. Uh, it's going to take too many passes and too much focus adjustment to be able to cut through something this thick. So how do you get these all laid out? Well, let's say you've got the singles. A couple different ways you could do it. You could just delete these and import them again from the library. Or you could just scooch them off of the uh, canvas here where you're working. So I'm going to scooch a bunch of these out of the way here. You can always drag them back in, or if you delete them, you can pull them back in from the art library. Either way. Okay, we're going to start out. This is the top. Uh, this will be for the uh, female one. So the that first thing I want to do is center this in my workspace. So I'm working from absolute coordinates. Now with the uh, top and bottom, you don't have to be real, real precise on your placement, but on the front and back, that's uh, like this here is the front or back, whichever you call it. You're going to need to place that very carefully and make sure you frame your work first because the cut is very, very close to the maximum size of that cutting board. Okay, so what are the settings here? Up here are my cuts and layers. 
Uh, ignore these two here. That's just the, the text I have off on the side uh, for you to read. They are not actually cut or engraved or anything there. So you uh, always want to do your fill first. I'm doing offset fill. And again, this is for 40 watt laser. 5,000 millimeters per minute, 40% power. And one pass. Now for the cut. And sometimes one pass will cut it. And sometimes it won't. So I always make two passes just to make sure because you certainly don't want any splinters or any non-cuts there. So we're using 475 millimeters per minute, 100% power. I know some people are going to say, oh, you shouldn't run your laser at 100%. I do it all the time. I haven't had any problems with it. I haven't worn any of them out. Uh, if you would choose to use, like, let's say 80% power, you're going to slow your speed down quite a bit. So we'll take that, we'll get them laid out on the laser here, and we'll get these pieces cut out. Then after you would get, uh, for example, this piece cut out, you can just take that and drag it somewhere, and then bring another piece in. Make sure you center it, at least I do, working from absolute coordinates. And again, because this is a the front and back and the, it's very very tight make sure you frame that first so that you make sure you're on the work this on the, uh, the top and the bottom so, uh, edges here there's very very little play so you're gonna have to be precise with that now we'll go to the laser Another thing I should mention here is uh, if you don't have one of these little calipers, this is a digital one, you can also use an analog. Uh, very, very good investment. You don't have to buy a real high-end one. You're not building spacecraft here. You're cutting things on your laser. It's important that you measure the thickness of your material because uh, they do vary a little bit. For example, this one is uh, 7.85 millimeters. These are all cut out of different boards. This one here is 8.3 millimeter, so yeah, you got to kind of be selective a little bit. They, they're not exact. Uh, the assembled project does come out just fine. Uh, being off by a few hundredths of a millimeter isn't going to make a big difference. Measure one more here. So this was 7.5, and that's what I based this whole design off of was the 7.5 millimeter thickness. So. There again, this is a handy tool to have. If you have one that's like really different, don't use that one. As I mentioned uh, when we were on the computer there, for the front and back, you need to be very precise on your placement of the cutting board on the laser bed and frame it. And I'll show you why, because I'm gonna hold a cut front panel up against the board. So as you can see, there's very, very little play there uh, you need to be exact on your measurement there because this is uh, almost right on the edges. Okay, I've got one here that's been cut out and I, I cut it out a couple days ago when the weather was nice and I could have the door open because it makes a lot of smoke. I'm not going to be doing any cutting in here today because it is absolutely horrible outside and it's cold. So I do have these pieces cut. This particular one does not have the uh, anything engraved on the top yet, I can do that afterwards. And I'll explain a little bit more here about uh, assembly here. We're going to assemble this as a whole solid box. 
And it's what a lot of people would call a bandsaw box, because then after the glue is dry and you've sanded it and made it all kind of nice, then you run it through a bandsaw and cut it, in this case, two inches down from the top, and then that makes your lid, and then everything matches up on the box, and the grains all align, and the stars align, and astronomy, oh, well, anyway, everything will line up that way. However, my bandsaw wasn't quite big enough. I was lacking about this much to be able to get it in the bandsaw, so I actually cut on the table saw. And you can do that too if you have a table saw. Okay, once you have all your pieces cut out, do any sanding you need to do. Uh, if you happen to get a little scorching where you didn't want it, it, it sands off real easy, a piece of 400 grit, 220, 400, and uh, get your pieces sanded ahead of time. It's very, very hard to sand it afterwards, especially on the inside. And you, you want to keep your black, so don't sand your black off. That kind of adds an accent to the box. So you will need glue, and I'm using Tight Bond 1 and a little glue bot here. And you'll need clamps. If you have lots of clamps, that's a good thing. As you can see, I've got quite a pile of them here on the bench. If you don't have lots of clamps, you'll have to glue this up and clamp it in stages. I happen to have enough, I can do it all at once. So I'll get you in close here, I'll show you how this all goes together. Okay, I start with the bottom, and this is one of the sides, and it will go in here like this. And of course, then this one will come in here like this. And then we'll have the, uh, the front and the back. So what I do to glue these, you have to pay attention to which piece goes where and how they fit. I apply a little dab of glue. Don't go overboard here, you don't want a whole ton of squeeze out. And these marks here, because they fit down on the base. And then I go a little bit on these tabs here, because they fit the inside. I can set that one in place. Then I'll do the same thing for the one on the other side. So now we have this much of the box. I'll take the back and I'll need to do the same procedure with the glue. When I'm doing a lot of these, I have a little uh, pan and a little brush I use, but since I'm only doing one here, I'm just using the glue bot. So then it will set right back here. Now I'll do the same for the front. Oops, there's the front over here. And lastly will be the top. Now of course, as I said, I don't have this one engraved. I uh, opted to keep this one blank for right now. I can always engrave something on it later. Now you gotta have to do a little bit of thinking when you're putting this on so that you get all the glue in the right spots. Decide which side you want up. Of course, if you have yours engraved, you'll, that'll be obvious. Again, if you're doing a lot of these, uh, a little glue pan and a brush is real handy. Okay, now for the clamping, you're going to have some squeeze out, so have yourself a kind of a damp paper towel. It's the blue shop towel, just dampen it a little bit. It's a lot easier to clean that glue off while it's still wet. So what you want to do when you place your clamps is get them lined up on tabs.
Okay, and then as you see glue squeeze out, you can just wipe it off. A lot easier to wipe it off now than trying to sand it off later after the glue is dried. No, we're not done clamping yet. There's more. Again, make sure you go around and make sure you get all that glue squeeze out off. So, now we let the glue dry. Okay, if you don't have that many clamps, and you may not, uh, you can do this in sections and clamp it together until the glue is dry and then take it, your clamps off and move. Just make sure that when you're doing that in, in stages that your pieces are perfectly square and not canted one way or the other or your next piece won't go in correctly. Uh, it's, having this many clamps is kind of a luxury, I guess. Um, I'm only able to clamp two of these together at a time because I even run out of clamps without using the great big ones. These little squeeze clamps are, work real well for this. And they're not all that expensive. You could also use uh, ratchet straps. I've seen people do that with things. Put a ratchet strap around it and tighten it up. So if you have a bunch of ratchet straps laying around, you could do that way. Um, I don't think that rubber bands would work on something this substantial. I have done projects before with uh, small laser cut things where I just wrap a rubber band around a bunch of times and use that as a clamp. But we'll let this set up and dry and then we'll cut the top off. Okay, glue's dry, clamps off. I sanded this a little bit where I had a couple little glue smudges. And even when you're careful, you still end up with them. But when you're sanding, be careful not to uh, sand through the black on your cut edges because that adds your contrast. If you should happen to do that, a Sharpie is your friend. You can fill that in and nobody will know the difference. Something to keep in mind, I got one little mark here where I'll probably touch it up with a Sharpie after I get my cut done. So what I need to do now, and if you have a bandsaw that has a high enough throat for this, uh, come back two inches and Make a cut. Let's make sure it's straight. I'm going to be using my table saw because my band saw doesn't quite go up high enough. So I need to set my blade. Of course, you can't see what I'm doing here, really, but set my blade up to just go through that layer. And I don't really have the right blade in here for this. But I can do a little sanding afterwards. Set this back here to two inches. I know you can't see this because it's on this side and I don't have any way to get a camera over here, but um, I'm going to be cutting the top. I guess we'll make, uh, this doesn't make any difference. Pick out which side you want to be the top. Of course, if you have yours laser engraved, uh, that would be the top. So that side would be against the fence. I suggest you use a higher fence if you're doing this and not just a stock low one. And you should end up with something that looks like this. After the cutting operation, I, I really had the wrong blade in there for this, so I didn't want to swap the blade. A uh, little piece of 400 grit sandpaper, just on the edges. Take that rough stuff right off.
Okay, then what you're going to need to do is figure out what's front, what's back, because I didn't, I should have kept track. I believe it goes the other way. Yes, it does. Okay, I need to get my hardware. Okay, what hardware you decide to use is entirely up to you. Um, I buy this stuff in bulk since I, we do so many of them. I just got a whole dish of the hinges and latches here. Now, something you need to keep in mind with bamboo is it splits very easily. So you need to drill a pilot hole, even for these little tiny screws. And of course you need to size your uh, pilot bit according to what you are using. This is a sixteenth. And I have a set very, very, very shallow so I don't drill all the way through. Putting a clamp on your box will keep everything straight and square. When you're working with little teeny tiny screws, it's nice to have your uh, screwdriver magnetized. Okay, once the hinges are on, I take my clamp off and I turn my box over. And I will clamp it on the side here so it's clamp is out of my way. I need to measure across here, three and three quarter inches. That's the center, and just put a little dot. The way I know where the center is. And my latch will sit right here. I can center that on that dot. Pilot holes are very, very important when you're this close to the edge of that bamboo because, like I said, it splits very easily. Now for the other side of the latch. And there we are. And as I said, we get a little spot right there, like where the you sand it through just a little too much. Just take a sharpie. You never know the difference. So the finish is up to you. I use a uh, spray lacquer. Uh, this is made by Watco. Uh, semi-gloss, that's my preference. You can uh, do as you wish. I'll go over this uh, again with some real fine sandpaper and then a tack cloth and then I will probably put three coats of this lacquer on it. That's what I generally do is three coats. Uh, warning about this, especially on bamboo, don't try to do it heavy because it will run. So do your coats lightly. This dries very quickly. It flashes quickly. Uh, dry to the touch of 30 minutes. So it, it's not hard to do a bunch of these uh, all at once. I did do a batch here about a week ago where I did 10 of them and I didn't use a spray can, I actually used a spray gun uh, with clear lacquer in it, semi-gloss lacquer, but that's not what most uh, home bodies would be using. So there again, Watco, not sponsored by them or anything, it's just a good product and that's what I'll be coating this with. Uh, as far as hardware, that's up to you. However you want it to look, you can go to your local hobby store, uh, hardware store, home store, and you can find things. I buy these in bulk. 
uh, hundred sets of a hundred because uh, we do a lot of this type of thing. And these little bronze uh, fasteners look pretty sharp. Again, this one here was made with nothing engraved on the top. I can go back and add it to the top if I want to, or it could be sold as is. Okay, next question I'm going to get is, well, why don't you put the finish on before you put the hardware on? Well, you can, and I have done that in the past before, but I found with this uh, clear lacquer, it gives this a little bit of a sheen on the uh, bronze hardware, and it doesn't gum anything up, so I don't have any problems with it. So, there's everything on that. Of course, this was done on the longer B140 watt. The uh, bamboo was purchased from Dollar Tree. And there's a lot of Dollar Tree stores around, and most of them carry this. Otherwise, you could order it off of their website. Uh, the laser was a longer B1. If you link in the description on where you can get yourself one of those. Uh, I don't buy this on Amazon. I buy it locally. But if I could find an Amazon link for it, I'll put that in the description. The light burn files for this box will be, there'll be a link in the description. It's a free download. Again, it's for 7.5 millimeter or 0.3 inch thick material. You don't have necessarily have to use bamboo, but it has to be that thickness. If you get anything thicker or thinner, it ain't going to fit together right. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate sure getting a thumbs up. It always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Oh, somebody's going to ask how much you sell that for. $35. So there you go. Thanks. That's without the liquor. You got to supply that yourself.